right now, uh, joining us now to talk about Singapore's National Day, the importance of NDP and independence, our very good friend and history guru, Jaya Ayadurai of the Singapore History Consultants. So great to have you with us in the studio today. Good morning, John. Good morning, You know, nice usually, usually we have you on the phone as it relates to uh, something related to World War II or whatever, but great to have you here. First of all, we have to uh, congratulate you on your recent um, ascension to a higher level. Tell us about what happened. The man who has written extensively <laughs> about the British Empire is now technically a part of the <laughs> British Empire. Tell us what happened. Well, um, I was called up one day by the British High Commission and asked whether I would accept an award uh, from the British government and Queen, and that was an MBE. Could you downplay this anymore? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really. <laughs> okay, carry on. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I was, um, you know, totally surprised and, um, and and pleased for my team because it was a reflection of the work they had done. And so I was um, I was awarded the MB, which is um, an honorary MB because I'm a Singapore citizen, not right. a British subject. And um, and I, it, it sh and the award was given for the work in military history and, and uh, preservation. Uh, and heritage works in Singapore, do, do which you, is a shared history. Do you have the Singapore. physical medal it's, now? It's uh, on its way. So when did this actually happen? Uh, the award was officially given during the Platinum Jubilee in uh, June. Mm -hmm. um, so was this the Queen, because there's several, aren't there? Was this the Queen's Honours? It's the Queen's uh, right. Honours. And, and this is a member, MBA is member of the, of British, the British Empire. Empire. Yes. yes. And um, and most excellent honour uh, and, and so forth. Um, but it was, um, you know, very kind and um, and it came during the Jubilee plan, uh, Platinum Jubilee and the ceremony takes place sometime in September. So October. after you hung up the phone, the British High Commissioner calls you. But and it says, was a physical meeting. Oh, she okay. actually invited me to a home. So it was okay. So you you you've been just uh, found out. You're getting the MBE. You walk out the door. You get in your car. And what do you do? Do you do a little dance? Do you do a little jig? Do you laugh? Do you, come on. What's the immediate you reaction? Must have like, slightly like, the irony of it as well, right? You spend your life you know, writing about the empire, mocking it, and now you're part of it. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes it feels like as if you are in the wilderness doing the work you do, and yeah. sometimes it's not appreciated. Sometimes people uh, react against uh, your positions on heritage and so forth. <laughs> and so it was a sense of saying, okay, you know, someone gets it, what we're doing. And there was a sense of appreciation. But the first thing I did, like any good husband, was call up the wife. You know? <laughs> uh, and and um, so kept it quiet, got home, sat down and told it to her, and she did the jig. Brilliant. Nice. <laughs> and the presentation is in? Uh, probably end September, early October. Well, I'm here to reveal they couldn't get any other prominent British citizen, so it will be me. I'll be, <laughs> it. I'll be throwing it at you across the... No. They figured this year they'd get a bloke to give the yeah. award out. So. Uh, a commoner. A commoner. <laughs> a commoner. The, the no, it's, a, it's, it's great accolade. Well deserved. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. That's Thank wonderful. you very much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, let's talk about this weekend, though, right? National Day is here. Look, we all know what National Day means uh, mm -hmm. and, and the history and the origin of it. But from the historical perspective, wh where, what does this do for Singaporeans, having come from the days of the Sultanate, then the British Empire, then its own, uh, its own ability to govern itself? Well, I, I see it from both um, uh, national and personal point of view. Uh, in the sense that, you know, when I have my birthdays, I, I tend to take a day off and have it as a point of reflection. And I look at the past and I look at where I am and where I want to go. Mm -hmm. And National Day is the same for me. It's birth of a nation, Independence Day. And when I look at it, um, you, you need to look at where the nation was, what mm -hmm. it is today, and where it might head, and what it wants to do as a vision. And when I look back... Um, when we became independent, we came out of conflict. Uh, we had things like curfews in 69 because of the riots in Malaya mm. uh, and race and, and, and religion. And, um, you know, we were a poor country. We were a third world country. Uh, the British were planning to leave. We had massive unemployment. Uh, we had to create schools and so forth. But at a personal level, at that point, I'm a child of the 60s, born in 61, 61 this year. I lived in an urban kampong or urban village. And Which this, one? Just curious. It's you. along Upper Pilaba Road, All right. uh, Lorong Aling, you know, quaint and central Singaporean mm -hmm. name. Um, and it was not even linked to the national grid. That was how that different right? it was. Huh. 
Uh, I, I saw the transformation of our toilets from physical, from those bins that they pulled out um, to actual toilets and running water. Yeah. Um, at first, the well, village Probably had, like many of your contemporaries listening to the show today, right? Well, remember this. You all remember this, Yeah, right? and, yeah. and uh, bath time was, uh, we, at first we had one pipe for the whole village and uh, before five o'clock was the favorite time for the men because the ladies would come and have their bath for <laughs> everyone. All right, uh, and eventually we had pipe water, and for electricity, there was a rich Tauke in the neighborhood who had a generator who would provide electricity for everyone from six p.m. to twelve midnight. That's it. All right, and I remember the day we were linked to the national grid. I was eight years old, came home two o'clock in the afternoon, and my mum switched on every single electrical appliance in the house to show the novelty of electricity at two o'clock in the afternoon. Wonderful. You know, Wonderful. and that's my experience, yeah. the transformation that took place from a third world country to where we are today, a first world country. Mm. My nephews and nieces would have no idea of that experience of not having electricity at the end of a switch. Yeah. You know, and so I look at where we've been. And so it is a amazing transformation in relation to other countries and how far we've gone and i've seen that transition in my own life mm. physically mm. Um, i see it in terms of where we are today um, and uh, and you sp spoke about how you were moved by national day I, I think a country says a lot when you have that emotional resonance i've cried uh at times uh regarding the nation and for me it was the death of lee kuan yu you know there were many things i disagreed strongly with him in the, his latter years hmm. but this man made Singapore and when he died I cried like a baby and I, I couldn't believe it myself but I did and I cried again when uh, schooling won the gold medal you know I did actually yeah won. yeah because yeah. I was moved by it and yeah. and so that emotional resonance is there and your link to Singapore is there today we are a first world country we are one of the richest countries in the world from being one of the poorest. Mm. Uh, we have a well-educated population. Where do we go from here? And if I was looking at that, some would say that uh, we've peaked and it's downhill all the way from now on. Others would say that we reflect the failures of our success in the sense that you have an entitled population and things have become too expensive for them and there's complaints about everything that we, uh, it's around so, you. Well, let me just ask you about hmm. that, jump in there, about the entitled population because... One of the interesting comments I saw during COVID uh, from some, I must say it was a minority, because we still had, didn't we? We still had a form of an NDP, even during COVID, whether it was mostly virtual. But the, yeah. the message was clear from the top down. No, we need to do this. Mm -hmm. COVID or no COVID, we need to keep showing, keep demonstrating the value of NDP. And there were some comments saying, why? What's the point? What's the relevance? What's the use? We joked on, sh on the show earlier NDP represents for some people a chance to go away and go on holiday, long weekend, and so on. So to that point, to maybe some of those who may be considered slightly entitled or, or see the NDP as less relevant and the celebration less relevant, what would you say to that? I, I think NDP is extremely important because we are a young nation. I used to talk about this in the SAF uh, when I go back and give lectures at Staff College, and I used to talk about the importance of morale and traditions. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, we had a lot of British traditions in the armed forces when we first became independent. And then we had Israelis coming in to help, up, help us with other nations set up the army. And one of the things they did was say, get rid of all these little ceremonies. You don't need them. You need a functional army. Get rid of the spit and polish. And, right. and with that went out the traditions. And we just focus on the work. Now, that's all right for consultants from a country as old as Israel. They've got more than 5,000 years of mm. history and tradition, and they don't need more of it. They know it. they have an existential threat, and they see it every day. And so these traditions are already within their societies. Yeah, We don't have them. Yeah. We are a nation that came into being in the 60s. Someone, some people say we are an accidental nation. But we've had 57 years of being together, and we have created our own traditions and to the point that Neil can cry at National Day, all right? <laughs> and, and for us, that's important. It is one of the things that reflect being Singaporean. It is a tradition that reflects us and yeah. who we are and what we are and how we got things done. And one of the things is we are a pragmatic nation, yeah. but for a pragmatic nation that thinks that at the economic level for almost everything, 
National Day has been central. And yeah. it is central because it speaks to every Singaporean. Mm. And that's why I think it's important. Mm. We're talking with Ajaya Ayodurai, the Singapore History Consultants uh, uh, Chief. And uh, we often have Jaya on talking especially about World War II history. Um, and today, for all the obvious reasons, talking about National Day, what are the traditions that that maybe we still need to develop here in Singapore? You know, when you look at the National Day Parade, um, it it looks and feels young, right? In terms mm -hmm. of the the movements and and the people doing the things. This is from my outside perspective, even though you know I've been here twenty years, right? But it still feel looks and feels young. Is it just a matter, a function of time for it to marinate a little bit more and to and to grow more? Um, what do you mean it feels within, young in terms of personnel? Or, or I, I guess yeah, maybe or, or just the way that maybe just the way the parades go and and okay now it's time for the military and now it's time for this and that. It, it feels like it's. It, it, it do you has, think it's like manufactured and the well, sense of being manufactured? I won't, I won't use that word, but I will say that it, it feels like it it need, still is in the process of growing as a as a as a holiday. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It, 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 I understand what he's saying in the sense that... Uh, and I wasn't here for the first 20 or 30 years, so yeah. obviously I, I don't have that perspective as well. And, and for the very young, that might look that way too, you know, uh, in the sense that they grew up in a wholly different environment. Yeah. So it depends on what age group you speak to, okay. to a certain extent. And so someone from my uh, background would uh, see it as being important and a reflection of a tradition. Uh, and, and, and you have that um, historical baggage and emotional baggage that you can link to National Day. Yeah. Now, when you, if you are young, then you are getting into that process of understanding what it's about. Uh, and, uh, and I think that is important. The, are there other the, traditions that need to be developed still? Well, I, I think things will come up naturally. Okay from here mm -hmm. uh, when we were nation building which is an artificial statement all right mm -hmm. nation building these things were engineered by the state because the state saw it as being important they were reflections of the state uh, getting a people together but I think we have evolved but having said we have evolved our population has constantly been changing uh, and and evolving too so a child of the 60s or 70s or 80s would have remembered Simio Chinese, Malay, Indian, others, mm. all right? And that would be the standard way to describe the various groups of Singapore. It's now a much more complicated country. Mm. It's a much more, there is so much complexity in terms of the different groups that are part of Singapore, that are, you know, call Singapore home. You've got new citizens, uh, many who are born overseas who have become citizens. So you have that in interesting mix. Mm. And what is important is that you now have a population that is Singaporean that has first world uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. In the past, we just were worried about the food on the table and the roof yeah, over our head. Sure. Today, yeah. we are looking at self-actualization, navel gazing. Yeah. And so you're looking inside you and seeing yeah. how, it is, uh, how you connect at an emotional level, at a growth level. And to put it in human terms, you know, how am I connected to this country? Well, that was the point I was going to make to sort of flip uh, Glenn's question. What are the traditions, values, processes that you think we should keep and we should cherish mm, and we mm. should promote further, perhaps for generations who look at Singapore in different ways. Because you do a lot of talks and lectures and, and, and you go all around. I'm sure you see a very different response to what you say depending on the audience. Like if I speak to a younger crowd, sometimes a teenage crowd, and I talk about the, the history and why it matters and where you came from and the heritage, you can occasionally get the eye rolling, you know, we've yeah. heard it all before, the flag it's waving. national and, education yeah, and, and, and so forth. So what would be the traditions and values that would be so important for you to keep and preserve mm. for those generations? When we became a nation, there was a social contract. That social contract uh, is reflected in the National Pledge. And one of the things I disagree with Lee Kuan, you're calling it an aspiration. For me, I took it in hook, line, and sinker. Every day at school when I said it as a kid, it was something I totally believed in, mm. that we are all equals, that we are building a nation, and that we are part of a nation. And what was it built on? It was built on meritocracy that is totally reflected all the time. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah. built on the respect for the different communities and groups and looking at building the nation. And we are a pragmatic people. Now, a lot of those values came under stress over the years, all right? Uh, for example, during the pandemic, you had racial and religious issues coming up. 
Um, you had uh, people segregating into communal perspectives. So we are a rich nation at this point, but we need to look at where we're going and what we want. And I think the values that we grew up with and we, when we became a nation and the social contract was made, those values need to be cherished and protected. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there is so much more when people say we have peaked. In my opinion, there is so much more to look forward to. Mm. And, and, and uh, for example, um, we are a democracy, but certainly not a liberal democracy. I think in time we will move in that direction and the country will have a great expression for the individuals themselves. And I think that's important and that's where to go. I, I think there is new economic challenges that come and people will find ways to actually face those challenges because we've always been able to adapt. Another basic principle of being Singaporean, we adapt. We adapt to yeah. challenges and we overcome. And when we see a problem, we make it an opportunity. The way we did water, for example. We are short of water, so we invested in water technology, and now we teach the rest of the world how to yeah. you know, get it's water. Amazing. You it's know? amazing. Tell you, what's your favorite part of National Day? What do you like the most? Well... I, I think the chance to um, get with family, watch the parade where possible, and and the build up to it, because you'll always have the jets flying around, and you know this is National Day season, and this is the climax of it, and and you look at for me uh, the military component is always very important, uh, having been a military historian and still a military historian, and seeing mm -hmm. our ability to defend ourselves. And, and it is an awareness that this was not by accident. There were good minds thinking about how we became a nation, how we defend ourselves. So the discussion you had earlier, I wasn't party to it, but I was hearing Neil about how, you know, people argue about Nancy Pelosi and the invasion of Ukraine and so forth. For me, it's very simple. Hmm. Uh, if you're a Singaporean, National Day reflects that, and you need to look at what is in our national interest and how to protect it and that national day thing is a reflection of that uh it is the fact that we belong to this country and it's a tangible physical representation of that but i'm also concerned where we're going because today you have some among us who will you know parrot the beijing and moscow line and say hey you know why should you fight uh and why should we put in sanctions against uh russia when it is in our national interest to hold up the principle of international law and protection and sovereignty. So we are always in the process of becoming a nation. Yeah. And, and so point. National Day reminds me of that in the sense that there's always change. There is, national Day is continuity in the midst of change. Mm. And there is always continuous change because our population is changing all the time. Mm. Our challenges are changing all the time. Well, I'll nice. just, I'll just that, that beautifully put. I'll yeah. just finish by saying uh, lots of comments coming in, not surprisingly. Our old friend N. Sivasolti says, congratulations, Jaya, for your inspiring, objective, sustained, and mm. innovative mm. work on military history, heritage, and remembrance, inspiring leadership all these years. Well, Have you paid him for this? <laughs> no. no. I haven't met Sivo for a long time. He's the auto man. He takes care of the yes, autos of in Singapore. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, so our paths in terms of natural heritage and heritage cross crisscross sometimes. And he is an amazing chap who's done amazing work in science and in... But as and have you. So we will, to wrap this up, as a, a fun question to finish. Most important question, of course, for every Singaporean listening. What will you eat over National Day? <laughs> mm. Well, I'm vegan, so my options <laughs> are... Okay, I'm vegetarian. Right? Yeah. But I look forward to a nice um, veg, a vegan base, um, and I hate to say this, um, Ipo Kway Tiao. Oh, oh there, there you, you go. go. You yeah. can't argue with that. A perfect yeah. choice for the perfect Ipo day. Ipo Fried Kway Tiao. Perfect. Brilliant. Our, our Brilliant. Special Sorry, Penang Fried Kway Tiao, not Ipo. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with us today, Jaya Aya Durai, the, of the Singapore History Consultants, talking to us about the history of, uh, of National Day and where it's going from here. Always a pleasure to have you with us. We can't wait to have you on again. Absolutely. Thank you, my friends. Uh, really love coming here and having that engagement with you guys. Majula Singapore. Happy, happy uh, Independence Day to you. Happy Independence Day. Okay.